And it's not the back pages the AFL would have wanted coming out of the weekend, that's for sure. Uh, as you said, JB, Jimmy Webster's hit on Jai Simpkin was a yeah. sickening bump after the ball had been disposed of. Uh, there, were, uh, there was remonstration from uh, North Melbourne players and uh, coach Alistair Clarkson as well. So there are many layers to this, but he's been sent straight to the tribunal. And, you know, it's so sad, I think, to see an incident like this occurring so soon after Gus Brayshaw announced his retirement due to mm. concussion. Uh, and obviously the past 12 months in terms of the discussion regarding, uh, you know, CTE, brain injuries from, from players in, in past generations as well. Um, to see this sort of incident was was extremely disappointing and uh, obviously straight to the tribunal is is was expected, um, but now it's about what's appropriate for this kind of act. And in 2024, you, you kind of think and hope the AFL is wiping the slate clean and, and there'll be, uh, there'll be a, a, a significant punishment that will begin to deter these kind of acts. Yeah, it's going to be a hefty suspension that he does get. I think we're all expecting that. It's just, it's a brain fade, but it's a stupid brain fade yep. as well, especially as you said, the, the new conversation we're having around concussion in this game and the lawsuit that's hanging over the AFL uh, or potential lawsuit at the moment. Mm. I mean, yeah, it's just, it's the concussion, obviously, no one goes out there wanting to concuss a player. And so I, I still um, are on the line of, of caution when I talk about these incidents because I don't like saying that he did it intentionally, but he he intended to bump and now he needs to live with those consequences. Correct, yes. it, it's just it's it's mind boggling that a player does that during the preseason mm. as well. But parking aside the Jimmy Webster name, I can't pretend like I know what it's like to be out there in a fast paced game and playing at the top level and trying to change your mind in the split second like that. It must be a hard thing to do as much yeah. as it was a brain fade by him. But parking Jimmy Webster aside, he's going to cop his punishment. The The thing that interests me is the conversation that's happened uh, based on this bump. And mm. it's the people calling for the six weeks, the eight weeks, the 10 weeks, the 12 weeks. None of it's surprising. Even when I'm saying those numbers, yeah. you're, you're nodding because it's like, well, yeah, that's what he might, he might get. But it's, it's the AFL trying to make a statement. So do they give him the eight week or the 10 week ban? But what my question is, what is a statement? Because I'd like to think players know they're not allowed to bump when they go out there. I'm just wondering, if Jimmy Webster gets five weeks, more than the four weeks that Power Pepper deservedly got, mm -hmm. a player's going to go, oh, he got five weeks. That's a statement. The they know not to bump. The groundswell of support for these bigger numbers is um, is encouraging, I think, when it comes from the, the broader community of footy and not just um, you know outraged fans of the player. It's this new community the expectations yeah. that they the, have. The expectations are shifting, and I think the AFL has... Uh, plays an important role in this in keeping up with community expectations of, of, of what is deserved. And what's appropriate, I mean, this is this is the question, right? So you look at um, acts in the past that were probably obviously more intentional. You look at Andrew Gaff on, on mm. um, Andrew Brayshaw. You look at uh, you know Barry Hall going back many, many years. I think they got eight and seven weeks um, respectively. And yep. those were normally, that's reserved for really bad acts on the field, right? I can sort of see this becoming the new thing. If you're launching yourself at someone and, and causing, you know, what we now know could be irreparable damage to one's brain, I think that that's, that's something you need to just stamp out of footy. And, and younger generations, you know, we'll thank ourselves for doing this in, in 10 years' time when those that have grown up playing footy and that are, you know, starting to play footy now yeah. come into the league and they know not to do that action. Um, but but banning, it, banning him for an appropriate amount of time, what's appropriate? It, that's that's the thing, but it's just so the, strange. The statement's to look back. the same between six and twelve weeks, no matter what he gets. It's we a all big know. statement. Yeah, yeah. But it's just so interesting that you know, twelve, just more than twelve months ago, was Cozzy Pickett, um, mm. you know, vertically, uh, sorry, horizontally going at Bailey Smith. He only got yeah. two weeks for that, mm. and it's just so interesting to see how quickly the mindset and the attitudes towards this have shifted, and quite dramatically as well. That's where the outcome outweighed the action yes. at that stage, and it's it's good that the AFL is starting to swing now and actually punish the but, action. But, but as would they to the outcome. would they be punishing him more? Would there be a call for six and eight weeks if um, Simkin had been bumped and then gotten up straight away? This is this is the question. Well, that I would like to say yes, but I don't I think, think that's so. the case. Yeah. Um, the interesting other thing, other interesting thing out of this uh, language from St Kilda and, and Ross Lyon uh, coming out of this this weekend was very interesting. I think clubs are starting to understand the importance of this. Of course, you look at St Kilda. Paddy McCartan was was a player who suffered many concussions playing for that club, and I think St Kilda have been really careful with this. Lyon said clearly, there's no defence for it. 
Um, you know, when in years gone by, your coach probably comes to your defence a bit more. Um, the Saints said, you know, we will respectfully accept, accept the outcome of the tribunal. You think in, in years gone by, the club goes, oh, no, we will defend, we'll try and get them. I think that this, these winds have changed in terms of the language that clubs and players and administrators and, and footy heads are using. You know, is starting to understand that this is mm. a really significant issue and, uh, and one that's... Um, and one that, that's clearly not going to just go away overnight. Well, that's why I find yeah. I find this one hard to judge whether it is that the clubs are coming around and starting to, you know, again, we, we can go back four or five months ago to the Maynard one and yeah. just the, some people are saying completely innocent, some people are saying six weeks. There was just a big breadth of, you know, of uh, uh, discussion amongst that one. Whereas this one, everyone seems to be on the same page. Whether that's the industry coming around to, to sort of, you know, the same mindset or whether... The way I look at it is this incident was just so bad and out of the box and, yeah. and you just don't see it anymore that everyone just knew instantly that there was no sort of, there was no attempt to smother, there was no, oh, he's changed from a tackle or the, the power pepper one that got slung into it. There's always some sort of other factor. It was mm. like, that's just a blatant, late mm. high it's hit. Um, so again, uh, it's good that the industry's coming around, but I wouldn't use this as the, the case to prove that it has happened. I think we need to see... Round one or two, when the club start, you know, someone does get knocked out. Yes. The club goes, oh, that was accidental. No, no, I would like to really see, I would like to see the AFL appropriately punish the act and not the outcome. Yeah. Yeah. Once I start to see that, where oh, that was a dangerous act, you had the potential to cause severe injury, like what we, you know, have seen with Simkin. You're going to be rubbed out for and, three and, or four and weeks. And clubs don't challenge that. That's exactly. what I'm saying. It's, yes. it's the ones where the clubs challenge, where you go, hang on, why are you That's the challenging that? If you if that happened to your player, you know, you'd go the other way. The so. next part is changing that grading system because it was graded as careless, careless. and not intentional. Yeah. But it, it's it's an intentional act. He didn't intend to concuss Simkin. I, I, as I said before, yes. but he intended to bump him. Yes. And now he needs to live with that consequence. But I find it. Weird that they don't judge that an intentional. Regardless, act. it was going to the tribunal though. This is the, it this had, is the thing. Yeah, well, it, it had to. But I mean, what happens now with the bump? I mean, bumps are still a, a part of this game, right? What, what happens now? Mm. Are players going to be too scared to go in for the footy as they potentially the same way they have? I, I, and I don't think footy loses. This is going to be a controversial opinion to some. I don't think footy loses a terrible amount by like you know banning bumps like that. Mm. I think you know little little ones in contests is going to be fine, but I yeah. think if, which, if you which ban that, that bump, I don't think that's a big deal at all. It's when you had other options, I think. Yeah. Uh, depending on when you are listening to this podcast, you will find out. Uh, you might know actually the outcome of the tribunal, and uh, obviously something to discuss further on Red Time JB.